Hey, in this video, I'm going to tell you about these five unknown kind of hidden and secret steps to help you finally achieve your goals and stop sabotaging yourself and preventing yourself from getting what you really want. Because you might not even be aware of it, but you are in the way of, you stand in the way of you getting what you really want and the life that you really want. And uh, that's why maybe you're noticing that you're not in making progress, any progress towards your goals, or maybe you're just moving so slow and these five steps will help you fix it for you and uh well they will fix it for you and they will help you achieve your goals uh and make help you make progress towards your goals without even really trying right it's going to flow naturally and so these five steps will help you tremendously if you're new here my name is Avali Sack I'm the founder of Origo.com and here I help ambitious entrepreneurs build an empire Live a great life, an awesome life. If, even if you're not an entrepreneur and you just want to achieve your goals and live an awesome life, hey, subscribe on this podcast. Uh, subscribe here on this channel because it's going to benefit you tremendously. And if you like what we talk about here and it helps you, please leave a like, subscribe, and uh, comment down below which of these steps will help you most. So let's get into it. These lessons I learned from reflecting on my week. And I reflected on what I learned this week and... Uh, I, this week, watched uh, a podcast of Patrick B. David with Tom Brady. And this is how I learned the first thing. And I noticed the first thing. I, I didn't learn it, learn a new thing. I was reminded of this truth. And it will help you tremendously if you ple please apply these steps, right? Like if you just listen to it without even like thinking about how can I think when you listen to me talk, Think, how can I help? How can I use this, right? How can I put this into my life? What question? Oh my God. I was almost going to make <laughs> the camera fall. Anyway, so how can you really apply this in your life and actually help you get to your goals, right? Well, you don't want just to listen passively. Be proactive and actually act on this. So first thing is I listened to Tom Brady. Uh, talk about how he achieved his goal. He became one of the best of the best. And the way he did that, he said that he was just using the opportunity that he had. He, he had an opportunity and he was just trying to, his, his, to become the best he could in this circumstance. Using this opportunity with this team, these teammates, and with the, like, he tried to really do his best in this opportunity, right? And this reminded me of the parable of uh, the talent in the Bible. And it's a parable that tells you, I, at least what I learned from it is use what you have been given, even, no, use what you have been given, forgive me, and if you don't, even that will be taken away from you. And so maybe right now you have some opportunities that you have, right? You have right now without even realizing it, a lot of good things going on for you, but you're not using them at your best and the best of your ability. Because if you did, you would actually be seeing these progress toward your goals. And if you don't know, if you're not familiar with the parable of the, of the, of the talents, hear how it goes really quickly. So there's a master, he has three servants and he gives to his three servants some talents. This is like talents of gold or something like this, right? Something precious, something like unique, something that has a lot of value. He gives to one, he gives five. To the, another one, he gives three. And to the last one, he gives one. Then he goes somewhere else. Anyway, when he, came, he comes back, he wants his talents to have grown, right? To have been productive and have became more and so the first one he had five he comes he comes back he has like 10 something like this i don't remember like the details but he has more right and so he tells me like good job man uh i'll give you even more and so he gives to him even more the one that has three he gets he comes back with like five or six and gives good job dude Good, good and faithful servant, I'll give you even more. And so he gives him more. And the last one, he had one. And he said, Master, uh, 
I was scared. I know you want to, you know, grow your talents, but I was scared and I, I went and I hid this talent, but here it is. He's still there. There you go. You still have this one talent. And the master says, unfaithful servant. You knew, oh, I'm a master that uh, wants his talents to grow, basically, right? I'm paraphrasing, of course. And uh, unfaithful servant, here, give me this talent. I will give it to the one that has five, that had five. And even that which he had was taken from him. Why? Because he was operating from a place of scarcity, right? He was scared of losing what he already had and he didn't use it to grow. I don't know if you remember, maybe when you were a kid, I know when I was a kid and uh, I have a brother, right? And my little brother and I used to have toys, right? We used to play with toys. And sometimes when I didn't ha use, when I didn't play with my toy that I already had, well, my parents told me, well, if you're not going to use this, well, I'll give it to your brother, right? So if, if I'm not using what I already have, even if I have a small amount of it, it's going to be taken away from it, from me. And for example, maybe uh, for me, I'm not a native English speaker, so I have to train to keep my English. If I stop using my skill of being able to speak English, I lose it. And so whatever you have right now, you need to use it. And you, do, you need to not be scared of losing it. And ask yourself, because I ask myself when I... It's funny how, how this, this thing works, because... I listened to the Tom Brady podcast and then I was reminded of this parable. And next thing you know, I'm opening up the, my Bible and reading it in the Bible, right? Reading the actually like this morning. I actually read the parable of the, of the, of the talents. And when I read this, I asked myself these questions. And I think you can ask yourself these questions and they will serve you tremendously. So, which talents am I being given that I'm not using and multiplying, right? Now, maybe in your life, you have some talent. You, maybe you have some skill. Maybe you have some things that not a lot of people can do and you're not using it because you take it for granted. Maybe you're scared of losing it. You're scared of losing the few amount of things that you have, anything that you could have. Or maybe you were a saver, just like I was. When I was a kid, I, I, I used to like just love saving things for later i was like i feel safer i can enjoy this more later and so i'm just going to keep saving and saving and saving i'm good i, I used to get like for example uh i used to buy a can candies i was i, I would um, i would eat one and keep one for later right i will keep it like just i have a few now i don't have a i have one last candy and i'm going to keep it and I used to keep it like for a month and then I could, I could not even eat it anymore, right? So it was taken away from me because I, I was scared of using it. I didn't want to lose it. Or maybe you're just not using your talents to enough of an extent. So for me, I'm, I'm going to give you a couple of examples here to maybe spark your creativity and maybe you know, get you some ideas on how you can use this. So for me, this YouTube channel, right? I could be putting more efforts into it and maybe turn those long podcasts into short. And I, this one is going to be pretty short and uh, straight to the point. But uh, sometimes there's a lot long podcasts. People don't watch them in the and in the entirety because they don't have the time. And I could be putting them into short forms, right? I could uh, put the podcast on Spotify, which I was planning to do for like since the beginning, really. But I didn't. I really never did, right? Because I don't put too much effort into this. Yet I. I I could I could use what I have right now. I'm already use I'm already doing this. So why not use it? Why, why not take this opportunity in it in its full extent, right? Also, maybe you're an entrepreneur and you have clients. And I told myself, oh, I could be delivering exceptional results for the clients I already have, instead of being scared of losing them and trying to get new ones in case. These ones don't stay or don't perform, right? And by the way, if you deliver exceptional results for your clients, they will tell more people about it and you will get more, right? Because you take care of what you already have, you will be given more. 
and for, for us like we work on performance so if we get better results for clients we get paid more so it's even like we have two incentives here i also have an a great email cold outreach system system that i could sell or add to my offer that would be like using what i already have i already have this system why not just ha give it to my clients and give them even more results make more value or maybe I could offer my sales system to increase even the sales even more. I could like use what I already have. I already have this in my company, right? Maybe I could ha, give it to someone because it has a lot of value. The networking course and group, I could use more to help people and learn in the course like to be more social because I'm not like the best outgoing person ever, right? I have a course on networking here in, here in France and I'm not using it, right? I have a group of people that are business people and entrepreneurs, and I'm not, I'm not using it. Why not, right? I could use this more. And by the way, I, I, because I, maybe I didn't use it for such a long time, right now it might be taken away from me, right? Because I, I didn't, um, how do you say that? I didn't, like I didn't take care of these relationships that I had with these people in the group. I stopped talking to them. And so right now I don't have a relationship anymore with them. And so I have to build it up back up, right? Small bit by bit. And this relationship that I had with this networking group, I lost it because I didn't use it. Or I live just right aside from Paris. And I never go to Paris. Right? Maybe... You, you live in a place that is awesome and you have maybe a forest aside from your house, but you don't go there. Why not? It's awesome. Like you could use what you have. I'm actually going to go to Paris this week just because I <laughs> I noticed that. I noticed like, well, uh, there's people like traveling from all around the world coming just to see Paris and I'm just right aside of it and I don't go. And most <laughs> French people is, is, is like this. We don't, we never go there because... Honestly, I, I have like too bad of an experience every time I go there. Just like too much traffic and just so many people. It's just like not my thing. But once in a life, once in, in a time, it's good. I think I'm, I'm going to go there for the holidays. So, um, yeah, maybe also the gym. I go to the gym every day and I could meet new friends there. And I don't use this. Like I don't talk to no one there, Right. Why, why? I mean, I talk to a few people that I already know, but I don't meet new friends. I don't make new friends there when I could. Or I have a church group. I, I don't have a church group. I could, I could go into a church group and meet people there because I already go to church. I know some people there, but I'm, I, don't, I don't use this, right? And I don't have many friends. So I could use this to have more friends. Maybe you currently have someone you care about. And you would want to have a relationship with them, but because you're scared of losing them, you don't tell them. And in this way, I can tell you, you will not have, if you stay like this, you don't act on this, you will not have a relationship with them and you will lose the current, like a deeper relationship with them and meaningful relationship with them. You will even lose the current relationship you currently have with them. Like even that, you will lose that. And so this is the first thing. You need, uh, we all need, uh, use, this is the rule that I have for myself, uh, use what you have been given or even that will be taken away from you. And so always ask yourself, which talents am I being given that I'm not m using and multiplying? Or am I scared of losing? Or do I not use to enough of an extent? The, the second thing. The second thing is something that I noticed because uh, every day I have a list, a to-do list of things to do. And I often put myself like five, six, sometimes tens, 10, 11, 12 things to do in a single day. And every day I have a, a sheet, an Excel sheet, on which I just put in my performance. How many things did I get done out of these five things? I got done two, I got done three. I got done, out of these 10 things, I got done six. And I noticed that on average, I always manage to only get done three. And this is a special number. Like the number three, I really think it's, it's a special number. Like it's, 
every time, by the way, Andy Frizzella, he has a program named 75 Hard. And in it, he tells you that every day you need to pick just three things. And you don't do more than three things. You need to do, put, to choose three things that you need to do in this day. Aside from the usual habits that you have, maybe you always go to the gym, right? This is not something like you, you count in it. So there's three things that you do. And you just do these three things. And I can tell you, like, sometimes I've been, like, putting myself to do 10 things, and I only manage to get done three. Sometimes, once in a lifetime, I get done eight out of 10. I never get done the 10 out of 10. It, it really rarely happens. And oftentimes, I don't use correctly. I don't sequence correctly all these 10 things because you have so many things to do. It's, it's harder to to know which one is most important. And so when you have only three things, I don't know if you can see me properly here. Anyway, when you only have three things, you put your energy into the three most important things. And it's clear. You don't have this overwhelming feeling of, I have to do all these things. You focus on these three things and you get them done. And at the end of the week, I, I'm so sure because I, I have this data on my Excel sheet. You get more done. I, I, all, I often get more done when I have just like six things to do than 10. When I get, I have 10 things to do, I often like, I do four, but guess what? Those four things are nowhere near as much progress than the three things I did when I had less things to do. So I only have like three things. And when you focus on these three things, you, more, you make m- m- way more progress. Next thing is to get serious. This week, I, I, I watched a few uh, videos of, on YouTube. I scrolled a little bit on, on YouTube shorts. And I came across my first mentor. My, the first person that, I, the first person, that, the person that introduced me to entrepreneurship to becoming better, to actually having a better life. I didn't know it was possible. Like, believe me, like I, I, I was so unaware of anything. I was just getting out of high school and not knowing anything. And I came across a video from Jim Ron. And this is the person that introduced me to personal development, introduced me to entrepreneurship. I didn't know it was possible to have a business. I, like, I, I, came, I come from far away from the, all this world. And... I came across some videos of you of him and he said this. He said that you, you need to be serious. You need to get serious about achieving your goals. And he was like, you need to stop making jokes. You don't want to be making jokes because you don't, if you're making jokes, you're not going to be, you're going to be a joker. You don't want to be a joker, right? You want to be an achiever. He didn't say exactly that, but this is the, the point he was making. Oftentimes, like, maybe you just don't take your goals so seriously and you joke about them and you just like, uh, oh, well, I didn't do this right now, but you know, it's okay, I'll do that later. Stop joking. Be, be, like, get serious about achieving your goals. And at the same time, you could, you could take this to an extent, to an extreme, right? And if you get it to an extreme and get too serious about it, like I do, oftentimes, like it's just like too serious for me. It's like it becomes a question of life and death. Like I feel like it's going to be like so bad if I don't get these goals, and if it's not going exactly the way I want it, I wanted to go, and it's not going to go the way you want it to go. Get serious about doing the things, but you can still be playful about it, right? Not joking and just diminishing the importance of your goals. But be playful around it. Like, it's a game that you want to, you want to win, but it's a game. So it's, it's okay, right? You don't... Because if you, you take it too seriously like I do, you get anxiety, you get stressed, you get... You, you, you just create for yourself unnecessary pain and suffering that is going to make you more likely to quit and more likely to not achieve your goals. If you go about it in a playful way, okay, I, I, I win this, I lose that, it's a part of the game. It becomes okay. And you are more likely to achieve your goals and you're more likely to actually act and do the things that are going to get you to your goals. The next thing is also something that I heard uh, of Jim Ron, And 
it was uh, in the same day, I think. I and I never came across Jim Run for like it's been a while since I've listened to him. And this week, actually yesterday, I think, I saw a short of him saying this. He had um, he talked about how uh, his father always had something to do. He was always discovering new things. He was always like from eight to ten p.m. He was always uh, going out to the theater, going out to see someone, uh, playing and looking like he was like, uh, "No, I'm busy tonight. I'm I'm watching." Um, you know, my, my grandkids play, right? He was always like doing something new and he, he never really got bored. And sometimes, you, especially right now, we get used to our habits. Maybe every night you come back from work and you watch Netflix. You do some things that you, like some routine things that are not, not really productive. Well, you could actually do new things be, instead of these. And I was invited yesterday to a uh, concert a church concert and i never go to these things like I, these things i'm not my thing and i'm just like i do go to church every sunday but I, I don't do much more like social thing and i go to party i don't do these kind of things i don't have the time this is always what i tell myself i always tell myself i don't have the time and I, plus i all i sleep at at 9 p.m so it's like there's not much parties I can go to by sleeping at 9 p.m. And with my schedule, it's just a mess. I, I never do these kind of things. And I was like, you know what? Because I've heard this, I was like, ah, you know what? I'm open to maybe go, right? I'm open to see like new things, discover new things because it just increased like your experience of life. You get more out of life like this. And I, I was like, okay, what time is it? And... Um, it was from 8 to 10 p.m. I was like, oh, all right, well, I can't go, right? And this is my automatic pattern hitting, like, again. I always say this. I always say uh, I don't have the time and it's too late. I can't because I, I have to sleep. I was like, you know what? Maybe this is not entirely true. Maybe I can go there for one hour. I can go there for one hour and just see a new thing, right? Discover something new. And maybe I'll enjoy it a lot. Maybe it will be awesome. And... So I went. I was like, okay, you know what? I'm going to do my. I'm going to go. And so I went, and I didn't like it too much. To be honest with you, I, I didn't like it too much. It was not my style of music. Like, there was a great chorus, and it was pretty good. And you, you could see like the effort put in and the hard work of these uh, singers. Uh, but not my thing. I, I don't. I don't like it too much. But. There, I I was able, thanks to this experience, to progress more a little bit on, on one area of my life, one, one goal of mine, which is to get married and have a wife. I, I want to have a wife, I want to have kids, and I don't really know what I like. Uh, like, I have not really, like, I haven't been in the, in the dating, like, uh, I don't date, right? I don't date people. I, I just like, I, I don't see anybody. I I don't know what I want in a woman. And so I, because I don't get out much, like a uh, vast majority of, like, I had, I don't have a clear idea of what I want my wife to be like, right? I know I want her to be beautiful and everything, like, but it's, it's vague. It's not really precise. And there, there was a beautiful girl singing and she was in the middle of the chorus and I, I was like, ha, huh. she has a lot of the things I want to be, I want my wife to be like. I like her smile. I like her, her hair. I, I like a lot of things about her. I like her character traits. I like her physical appearance. And now, and I, now have, I have a better reference point. I have a better idea on this part of my life that I did not plan to like think about or progress on this goal when I was going there, but because it was a novel experience, it allowed me to have this. And so there's a lot of things like when you allow yourself to have new opportunities, there's something like, if you, and you have set goals for yourself. Like I have goals written on paper. I have uh, a, a vision of what I want my future to look like. I know I want a beautiful wife, right? And so when you allow yourself to have new experiences, you allow yourself to 
experience the synchronicity, right? There's like things that, okay, I, I thought about, I thought about uh, doing something new and someone asked me to do something new. How fun. I thought about the parable of the, of the, um, of the talents by listening to Patrick B. David's podcast uh, with Tom Brady. And next thing you know, I come across this passage on the, in the Bible when I read it. And I did not do this intentionally. Like it was like pure random, right? But things happen like when you put your mind into something, you start doing some actions that cause to make you progress with your goals. And this makes it flow effortlessly. Like it just, I didn't, I, make, I made progress toward this goal of, my, of knowing what I want my wife to be like without trying. Like I didn't try. It just like happened. And so this allows you to, like, this way you stop preventing, like, I was sabotaging, sabotaging myself. I was preventing, preventing myself from having any new experiences. Always my routines, always sleeping early, always like, what if I, I slept like a half hour later? It's, it's okay. It's not, it's not going to be jeopardizing my business or anything, right? It's just like, okay, it's, it's something different. And if you allow yourself to have different things like this, it's just so, so useful. Now, this thing is very important and you want to get this right and you want to do it. And please, I hope you have taken notes on these things or maybe thought about things to implement. And at the end, please do so, like implement them actively. So this thing is something that prevents you from moving forward and a lot because you might have some stories that you tell yourself about your business, about, about your childhood, like mostly about your past. And you want to revisit your past and rewriting your past because he, like, if you can control your past, you will control your future, right? Because it, in our mind, when you say, okay, this always had happened, you unconsciously tell yourself, okay, so this is going to happen in the future. And if you expect this to happen in the future, it will become your, rea your, your reality. It will become the present. So in the present right now, you can control your past. And when you control your past, you can control your future. And you control your, the way you see it, right? The way you, you perceive it. So maybe you have been bullied in school when you were, when you were a kid. And you have this childhood trauma you can turn it and rephrase it in a way that makes you like you say you know what i'm grateful for this ha that have happened why I'm, ha I'm grateful for being bullied in school because it allowed me to get stronger it allowed me to learn that the world is not always going to be rooting for you it taught me that i needed to be i needed to become stronger and guess what i actually did Ha! Huh. And there you become grateful for your past. And so in the future, you see that all the experiences that you experience are for you instead of against you. And this is very important to have because if you don't and you keep this story of, oh, I've been bullied in school and the world is against me, well, it's going to be your reality and it's going to prevent you from moving forward. Maybe you have something like in your family, you've always been poor. Some like my family, are, we never had money, right? No one in my family was wealthy. I mean, maybe no one that I ever knew was wealthy, and maybe some people were a little like a little good financially, right? My my mom's family were like anyway. If you tell yourself, we know uh, in my family we always have had we always had money problem. Growing up, I was always poor. I always had money problem and we always were like imprisoned by money. Money was always like, I saw that if, and this is the part where I changed my story. I changed, I, I changed the way I talk and I think about it because I could have told myself, we, we always had money problem. And so therefore we will always have, we always had money problem. It's like this, right? We never had money, but I was like, you know what? I'm grateful for we had a lot of money problems because it allowed me to see the importance of money. It allowed me to see that if we had money, 
90 percent of my of my problems would go away. It allowed me to see that, and I'm grateful for that because because it also created in me a desire to become successful. I'm grateful. For, maybe like ask yourself, what are the past traumas and past stories that you tell yourself? Maybe you, I'm this kind of person, right? You you hold on onto you, onto your identity of you you are in a certain way. You don't have to be the certain way. You can change. And so tell yourself, okay, I'm grateful for I thought this because now I realize this. And any of your stories that you can tell and you can recall of your, sto- of your past, you can just flip them and kind of reverse them and say, okay, I'm grateful for this because it taught me this, because it taught me that, because I became this thanks to that. Let me give you an, another example. For uh, if you, for me, I when I went to school, I always felt in danger. I always felt like uh, people didn't want the best for me. I I felt imprisoned. And one time I was like, I like I don't know what I was like, eight years old. Anyway, I when I saw the teacher close the door of the school, like outside the outside door of the school and lock it with its keys i just i just cried i just cried like crazy i was thinking oh my god i'm never going to see my mom again i'm never going to see my parents or my family again i'm i'm i don't know if i'm going to make it alive out of here right it was like crazy there was not much danger but i felt in danger i don't know why i felt in danger going in school i felt like people didn't want the best for me and i I didn't know if I could sustain all the, like if I were going to get out of this alive, I didn't know if I was going to be able to sustain the suffering while I was there. And so I could, I could say that like, I could take this as a story that just holds me back and makes me feel like the world is like a dangerous place. Or I can just take this and flip it and become grateful for this experience i'm grateful for this experience that made me feel in in danger and in prison in school because now i had this desire because of this to become totally free to become so free that no one could ever tell me anything so free that no one could have any power on me and and created me in this desire for success and freedom that i would maybe not otherwise have and so i'm grateful for this experience I'm grateful for it because it also taught me that at the end of the day, I was not dead, right? At the end of the day, I was still alive. I was able to sustain more suffering. And so I'm grateful for this experience. And when you become grateful, you allow yourself to be creating experiences that are going to be good in, your, in the future. And you prevent yourself from, and you, you prevent yourself from preventing yourself from achieving your goal and just getting in your own way. I hope this episode served you tremendously. Please take like notes on what you're going to do now. Write down your experiences in the past. What ha- like You can write down everything about, about your future, ab- about your past to then rewrite your future. If this was helpful to you, subscribe and tell me which one was the most useful to you. I really am curious about it. I want to know about it and uh, yeah. I'll uh, see you in another podcast. Take care.